Hello, hello. Oh, I've had a nightmare. Um, I thought it would be really easy. I um, It took me a long time to get a setup where you can kind of see what I need to talk to you about. And then um, my sewing machine went wrong. Um, I've done a little test and it looks okay now. Um, I've, I think what the problem was, was it the needle was going down and really struggling to come back up. And um, there was a little loop in the bobbin thread. So I took all the thread off, re-threaded the bobbin. I've put a new needle in because I think um, it bent the needle. And we are now ready to go. Um, I've got this new, I, I'm pointing at it and you can't see it. I've got this new bendy tripod and I'm having to film on my phone. So hopefully the video will be the right way up when I play it. Um, so let's just get started. So the first thing is I have my machine at the moment set to zigzag stitch because I'm going to stitch around this image that we just made the tag for. I'm going to stitch around this image in zigzag. Now zigzag is much more forgiving, um, I find, than um, straight stitch. However, I do not believe the sewing oh who who wouldn't like it perfect but i don't believe it has to be perfect because these are junk journals we're not we're not making like i said before a ball gown <laughs> we're making junk journals so um i've got this set up so you can see the foot now on the foot there is a little line here and a little line here and then you've got the gap here now when when i'm sewing in zigzag I have the edge of my image lined up with that middle middle line and this is, phone is going to keep going, moving focus because my hands are coming in and out but I line this part of the foot this part here this straight edge I line that up with the top of the image and I'm using a fairly um, I am going to turn it down actually one um, I set the size to my zigzag it doesn't matter to be fair as long as you've got that middle line set up with the edge of your I'm at a very odd angle and I don't really trying to get the foot pressed down but as you know I haven't got a lot of room under my desk for my legs it's very difficult to actually put so I keep that line I'm going very slowly but I keep that line lined up with the edge of my image it might move slightly that's okay the zigzag is a lot um, like I said it's a lot more forgiving than the straight stitch but I still don't think a straight stitch has to be bang on perfect so my first tip is when I get to near the end of the image it's obviously slow down and I wait until I'm one stitch off the image so I slow down and wait and that is the first stitch that is just off the image. Now what I do is I lift my foot, spin the image around, and then I pop the foot back down. Now in this case, the line is almost bang on where I need it to be. So I'm just gonna carry on sewing. I always lift the foot and not the needle because then you're pivoting the image with the needle in it so you're still going to be able to carry on that same stitch row. Now, even if I try and stitch faster, unfortunately I can't because I don't have the leg room to push the pedal down any further. I've got one of these machines that you don't have to use the pedal. There's a button that can start and stop and you change the speed and you just let it go. But um, I don't trust it. So one more stitch and I'm now off the image. So I lift my foot spin the image round and this time you'll see that the line is not at the edge of my image now with a zigzag stitch this this is what you can do if you lift the needle first then very slightly lift the foot just to give you some maneuver room slide your image over so your line is at the edge of your image and then put your foot down if you lift the foot all the way up you could move the image too far and you'll end up with a big loop of cotton. I hope this is making sense. I'm, I'm hoping that the fact you can see what I'm doing is making what I say make sense. So 
so I'm going to try and speed up slightly. I know it's very loud and I apologise, although I can't keep it up for too long because my leg is pressed so hard against the top of my desk. Okay, and one more stitch and now I'm off the edge. So I lift the foot, spin the image, pop it down and I'm a little bit off again. So I'm going to lift the needle, very, very slightly lift the foot, move my image, pop the foot back down and then I'm going to sew. This is absolutely the fastest I can go with my leg in the position it's in. I'm really sorry. <laughs> That is how I stitch around an image with the zigzag stitch. And what I will do is I'm off, I'm going to spin it, I'm going to lift my needle, move my foot over very slightly, and I'm just going to do a couple of stitches backwards. Right, now this is going to be the tricky bit because I'm very close to the camera. Lift the needle, lift the foot, and there we have our finished tag. I'll try and show you the back. Okay, so now we're going to do the stitching round a corner. <laughs> and this is where it is going to go horribly wrong because I'm filming. So I'm going to change my machine to the straight stitch. Now, obviously, the smaller the stitch, the easier it is to go around the corner. Um, but you can only really use a really small stitch when you're using a thicker. This is 300 GSM cardstock, so that's okay. Um, I usually use um, a, a stitch around a four if I'm using paper and around a three if I'm using thicker. Sometimes I will go smaller. So I'm going to set my machine to, I'm going to set it to three and a half for this. And I'm going to bring my foot down. And I'm using the edge of the image this time, the edge of the card, the tag, lined up along my little centre line. Now when I start to sew, I'm going to keep that line as close to that centre as I can. And again, I'm really sorry that I'm going so slowly. Now when I get to this edge where it starts to curl, I'm going to start moving really slowly, just so I can show you. Right, that line has now started to come away. So I lift my foot very, very slightly and turn and drop the foot. And then I do one stitch. I lift my foot, spin it very slightly, put it down. And each time I'm lining that line up, that line with the edge of my card. And I think you can see that. And I'll do one stitch. Then I lift the foot, I line that up, I drop the foot and I do one stitch. Lift it up, spin it drop it and do one stitch and you can do that as many times as you need to to go around the bend that you have now I know there are machines out there and I think this possibly has a foot <laughs> where I can do it where you can kind of free stitch you know I think it's an embroidery foot um, I don't think I'm good enough or confident enough to use that right now so I'm now starting to get the, the hack where it's not going to um, it's gonna the line is not lined up with the tag so I lift you must make sure you lift that foot very slightly because otherwise you will put pressure on your needle and it will bend your needle it's just a case of lifting and turning to keep that middle line lined up with the edge of your tag So it's, it's not rocket science and it's probably not the only way to do it and I'm sure I'm going to get inundated with comments of people telling me a better way and please do because I would love to see and know how to do this better. But I just make sure I do one stitch at a time. Keep moving. This is the one I'm probably not going to use because it's got the glue on. Unless I can come up with an ingenious way of covering that. And not only is it glue, it's glue with ink. 
So I'm now got, I've now got to that stage where it's just slightly off. So I'll spin one stitch, spin one stitch. And then what I'll do is I'll keep stitching over just to overlap those first few stitches. Sorry, I keep dropping the camera. Lift it up. And now you can see that we have quite a nice rounded edge. And this gap is the same all the way around because we've kept this lined up with that, that middle notch. Okay, so obviously these cards you will be able to see when I do the full flip round. I'm just going to find something else so I can show you. I want something that I'm going to do a straight stitch all the way around so I can show you what I do. Um, I don't actually have anything that I want to do a straight stitch round at the minute. Right, let's... Let's do, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an image. I'm, I've just taken an image and I've popped it onto a piece of cardstock. And this will make obviously another very simple tag. So I'm going to do a straight stitch around this. And I'm going to show you what I do when I get to an edge, if it's not going to line up. So actually I can show you straight onto the cardstock because that's probably a bit clearer. You'll see. Okay, so I'm lining the edge of my tag or my image, it could be an image, and I'm lining it up. Now, when I get, I'm just going to sew a straight line until I get to the edge of the, of the card. Now, where this is not as forgiving as the um, zigzag stitch, what's going to happen is when you get to the end, chances are when you spin your card, that's not going to line up. Now, if I do another stitch at this size, I'm going to overshot it and then I'm going to be too close to this edge to get an even um, to get it even all the way round. So there are two ways I do it. If it's something that I think it does not have to look absolutely spot on, quite often if I'm doing an envelope, I will make the lines a bit wobbly anyway because that looks nice. But what I will do is I'll use a similar technique. I'm just slightly lifting and I'm going to aim that middle towards the end of my card. And I'm just gonna do a stitch, and then I straighten it out slightly, and then I do a stitch, and then I straighten it out slightly, and I will sew. And I'll show you what that looks like if you just try and line it up. You get a very slight curve in your line, which is fine, there's no problem with that. I don't mind it at all and I still think the stitching looks fantastic. So I'm going to show you what else I do. If I'm going to, hopefully this one won't line up perfectly. Okay, so now I get to the end and again, I haven't got enough room to get a stitch in this size. So what I do is I'll just reduce by four, do one stitch and then increase by four so I know when I turn that round, there's not going to be such a big gap or such a an angle of the turn. So I'll show you what that looks like. You can see the small stitch I did. If I'd have done a stitch this length, it would have taken me very close to this edge. I could have still done that and then carried on lining this up with that middle notch and I'd have had a, a, a little angle coming this way, which was the opposite to this angle, which is a more curved angle. So that's just another way of doing it. Just reduce the size of your stitch to do a little stitch and then carry on sewing with the, the other side, the, the original size. So this stitch here is a three and a half. That one is three smaller four smaller which was a 1.8 on my machine every machine is going to be different this is a brother brother oh I don't know it's a brother <laughs> and it's an electronic key thing um, so 
I hope that's helped. Probably not, but I'm literally at 15 minutes, so I do have to stop. Um, I'm more than happy to do more sewing videos if you like. Please let me know. Thanks. Bye.